Hallelujah. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another worship session with the God's Healing Stream Ministry. Hallelujah. Let us pray right now. Father God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We invite you. Jesus, hallelujah. We invite you. Holy Spirit, we invite you. Be with us. Speak Speak to us from heaven. Download your words to us. Are Speak through us. Hallelujah. Glorify your name. Hallelujah. Glorify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. 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 you are so good. You are so good. Pour out your love. Love your people. Love on your people. Hallelujah. Draw them to you today. Draw them. Even the backsliders. Draw them. Heal the sick. Do miracles for those who need miracles. We thank you, Father Baba Shika. Edify, encourage, and strengthen your people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, I feel the Spirit. Glory, 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 glory. Your presence is so sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord a little longer. His presence is so sweet. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Rabo Hey, hallelujah. Fill us, fill your people, fill your people right now with your sweet spirit. Those that have, haven't oh, felt the touch minute, from you in a long time, oh, I'm, I'm touch them, them, touch them, them, touch them now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, praise the Lord. Well, hallelujah. Uh, last week, the Lord was speaking to me about uh, um, you know this year. This, this, so seeing, this year okay. will be increase, 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 increase in every level of your life. Uh, if you obey me, do the things that I've been stirring you up to do. Hallelujah. And I'm determined to do these things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But even uh, this week, the Lord was speaking further uh, about wealth in God. And uh, he was saying, I'm giving you the secret of wealth. So you can be rich in me. So I want to speak today about rich in God. Luke 12, 21. Luke 12, 21 says, So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So that's talking about those that uh, accumulate wealth in the uh, material and they're uh, obsessed with that, but they're not rich in God. But the, on the other side of the coin, it's saying that you can be rich in God. There's riches in God. And so what God is saying is, uh, don't go for the riches of the natural realm. Go for the riches of the spiritual realm in God. Okay, Ephesians 3, 8. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is Ephesians 3, 8. So what Paul was saying is, wow, I've been so blessed that uh, I, I, I'm, I'm called to uh, speak about and reveal the unsearchable riches of Christ means the never-ending riches of Christ, the infinite, whoa, shaka, without ending of the riches of Christ. Praise God. They just go on and on and on. There's one rich then another rich, and then another rich, and on and on. It never stops. Proverbs thirty-one, uh, Proverbs three, thirteen. Happy is the man that finds wisdom, the man that gets understanding. That's uh, Proverbs three, thirteen. Now verse fourteen. For the merchandise, although uh, well, uh, uh, wealth of it, uh, 
uh, hallelujah, of it is better than the uh, value of silver. And the gain thereon thereof is more valuable than the gain of pure gold. Hallelujah. 15, verse Proverbs 3, 15. She is more precious than rubies. And all things that you can desire are not to be compared to her. 16, Proverbs 3, 16. Length of days is, is in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. So here again, we're seeing God talking about riches in God. The right hand of wisdom, if you get wisdom, there's long life. In the left hand, there's riches and honor. And let's go to Psalm 1. Psalm 1, starting at verse 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth, stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Oh, whatever he does shall prosper. All the things that he does shall bring prosperity. Wow. So the man that walks in the way of God, in the way of God, in the uh, uh, of obeying the laws of God and meditating on the laws of God, he'll be like a tree, a tree planted by rivers uh, of water, a tree that brings forth fruit, a tree that's fruitful, brings forth many fruit, and it doesn't wither, and it's a prosperous tree. Wow. So this is the life that God has called us to to be prosperous, to be rich in him, in him, to be fruitful in him. Hallelujah. Well, how do we uh, go about this? How do we get this accomplished in our life? How do we get this manifested in our life? And the Lord was saying, I'm breaking it down. I'm giving you the, breaking down the secret, the secret of how to be wealthy in God. Let's go to Luke 135. Luke 135, uh, the angel Gabriel uh, prophesying to Mary. And the angel answered her and said to her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now what this is saying is that, uh, the, uh, Gabriel was saying, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you get totally under the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost shall inundate you, shall flood you, and you'll be full of the power, full of the Spirit, full of the power of the Spirit, and you will give birth. You will birth spiritual fruit. Praise God. Praise God. So this is the secret of being fruitful by the Spirit. You know, a lot of times uh, we want to uh, we call to the ministry, and I'm telling you the truth, a lot of times we do things, but uh, sometimes things can seem like a good idea, and you do it, but you'll find out later it was by the flesh. <laughs> you, you have to wait on God, wait on God, and let the Spirit direct you. You don't want to do it in flesh, but anyway, uh, when you do things by the flesh, by the flesh, they won't be fruitful. They look good for a while, but you know they'll peter away. But when you do things by the Spirit, there will be real fruit. But what the what the Gabriel's revealing here is that when we get under the Holy Ghost, the shadow of the Most High, get filled with the Spirit, we will give birth. We will birth fruit by the Spirit. So this is one of the uh, secrets of. Uh, uh, being fruitful, being rich in God, get Holy Ghost filled, get under the shadow of the Most High, get in His presence, get filled with His presence, filled with the Holy Spirit and with power. And so, you know, one of the things is to constantly pray, 
Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I invite you, Spirit, Spirit of the living God, come, 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 hallelujah. And we have to understand it's a, 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 a constant thing that we have to do. It's like we can be filled today if we don't uh, pray much in the Spirit, uh, we can run uh, empty tomorrow. So it's a constant thing being uh, inviting the Holy Spirit Get going after the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shakaraba, shakaraba, shanda. Shakaraba, shanda. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So this is one of the, the, the keys to being rich in God, being fruitful in God, being filled with the Spirit. And being filled, we give birth to spiritual things, to fruit by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the next thing God uh, wanted uh, from us uh, uh, or requires of us, if we are to be uh, uh, rich in God, hallelujah. Let's go to uh, Ephesians 4.15. Ephesians 4.15. Let me uh, get that here. Speaking the truth in love. Hallelujah. Let me find that here. Ephesians 4.15. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Okay, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So the Bible here is saying, Ephesians is saying, we should uh, go after the truth, know the truth, uh, and speak the truth, but speak it with love. Speak it with love. Be filled with the truth. Be filled with love. And in this way, we can uh, be rich in Christ, grow up in Christ in all things. Wow. It doesn't just say grow up in Christ, but grow up in him in all things, all things, everything about Christ. Uh, uh, we start uh, 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 getting that, getting that into our soul and spirit. Hallelujah. But speaking the truth with love, and that's a challenge. You know, we can study the word of God and get truth, but then we have to uh, go after God even in another dimension, uh, soul-wise, uh, be filled with his love. You know, uh, I, I, I tell you, you know, it, being in the ministry for many years, uh, you can know truth, but sometimes you, you can uh, see someone make a mistake and you correct that person, but you're speaking almost with your judgmentalism, you know, with superiority. Oh, you should have known that. Well, you should have done this and that, you know, and <laughs> you could speak, the words you could say may, may, may be true, but the spirit of it, there's, there's no love there. There's judgmentalism. And so it's like, whoa, uh, the word of God is saying, speak, the, know the truth, speak the truth, but speak it with love. So we got to grow in love. And that's a challenge. You know, it's easy just to, by yourself, nobody around, you study the Word of God, get truth. But, you know, uh, to be around people and even people that are hard to get along, and then you've got to learn to love them. Wow, that is a challenge, but God uh, is requiring that of us if we're going to be really rich in God. Okay, so now, being filled with love. Whoa, Romans 5, 5. Romans 5, 5, and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. So uh, again, it's like pray much in the spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, welcome, welcome, Holy Spirit, you know, bring forth, uh, download the Father's love, the Father's love, fill me, fill me, fill me with the Father's love. One of your jobs, Holy Spirit, is to pour out the Father's love into my inner man, into my heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Download the Father's love into my heart. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. And you know, these are prayers we got to uh, make it a lifestyle, you know, every day be praying for these things because like I said, you could be filled one day and you slouch you off the next day 
okay? And you run on empty. So we don't want to run on empty. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> Pour out the Father's love. Pour out the Father's love into my heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Okay, now, now let's go to uh, Mark 12. Starting at verse 29, Mark 12, verse 29. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is here, O Israel. The Lord our God is one God. He's the only Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love your neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. The two great commandments. Love God, love people. Hallelujah. So, the Lord has said, if we love God, love people, we will grow in God. We will be rich in God. We will be wealthy in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, love God, love people. Praise God. Now, I'm going to uh, break this down even more. Love people and what now, how do we deal with people? And, you know, if you live life, you see a lot of people, uh, what, what we might call obnoxious, <laughs> hard to get along with. But this is what we got to do. Love people, see their potential and Love them, hallelujah, as God, see them as God sees them. Everyone has gotten a, a, a potential in God, a destiny in God. Uh, let's go to Ephesians 1, 11. Ephesians 1, 11. In whom also we have obtained, you know, in Christ, in whom, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being prayed predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So we have a we're predestinated. Every person has a destiny uh, in God, a wonderful destiny. Let's go to Romans 8.29. And Romans 8.29 says, we're called to be Okay, here, I'll read it. For whom he did foreknow, he also did, did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So the destiny, everyone's got this destiny, is called to be uh, like Jesus, like Jesus. Now, everybody is called by that uh, uh, purpose. Of course, the enemy comes to steal that destiny, uh, put us off on the right track. But every single person is called to be, uh, become like Jesus. And I, I, I compare it to like a garden. We're all ca called to be part of God's wonderful garden. We're all called to be flowers, but each flower has this specific type of beauty. So this has this kind of beauty. I have this kind of beauty, that kind of beauty. You have that kind of beauty. But we're all beautiful in God with the destinies, and we each reflect a certain aspect of Christ. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, here's the thing. Everybody has that potential in them. God sees it. But when we here on earth, human beings, deal with others, others, this is what we've got to be able to do. See that potential. Now, uh, I'm going to work on this even more. Jo uh, John 7, 24. John 7, 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So this is the thing. So often, it's so easy to judge people by the appearance. We see outwardly there's some rough edges, some things that are not so uh, pleasant. But God says, don't go by the appearance, judge by righteous judgment. Now, in order to judge righteous judgment, we got to be judging by the spirit. Judge, judge people not by the sight, judge by the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now that is a mouthful. But in order to fulfill that, judge not by sight, judge by spirit. We got to be full of the spirit. We got to get in the spirit and get full of the spirit and see as the spirit sees. Praise God. Praise God. So judge by the spirit. Now, uh, 
God also said, uh, do not judge according to the appearance. Do not condemn according to the appearance. And that we have to uh, uh, use discipline and refrain from that. Because if you're in the soul realm, you'll see something that uh, batches your soul and immediately, whoa, <laughs> I can't stand that person, <laughs> you know, <laughs> out with this person. Well, let's go into the life of Jesus. Let's go to Luke 19. Luke 19. Now, I'm going to illustrate this in the life of Jesus. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they, this means the people, including his disciples, his followers, and when they saw it, they all murmured, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. So this is the point. The, uh, Jesus saw Zacchaeus, but Zacchaeus was chief among the tax collectors. He was right at the top, and the Bible says he was rich. He was filthy rich, you know, uh, taxing the people, sending the money to Rome, but keeping, <laughs> keeping a lot of excess. Yeah. And so the people hated him, the, and especially the chief of the publicans, the richest one, the head tax collector, they hated his guts. And that's why when Jesus came down the road, Zacchaeus couldn't see him. He, uh, number one, he was hated. Number two, he was short. So they weren't going to let him come in to see Jesus. Get out of here. Get out of here. You scoundrel. You robber. You know, so uh, look at this. For all his money, he had to climb up on a tree to look at Jesus because he was hated so much. Nobody gave him an inch. But now Jesus comes and get a load of this. Jesus sees him and the people say, whoa, 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 whoa. How, how are we going to react to that, that scoundrel, the scum of the earth, that robber, that thief? And Jesus said, hey, Zacchaeus, come on down. I got to come to your house. I'm Jesus of Nazareth. I want to be your friend. <laughs> That's what, that's what Jesus was saying. I, I want to come to your house. I want to know you. I want you to know me. I want to be your friend. <laughs> look at when Zacchaeus, the man that was so hated, when he heard these words, he burst forth with joy and he jumped down that tree, ran to his house, opened the door. Come, come, come. He was so glad. Somebody loves me. Somebody wants to be my friend. Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So Zacchaeus, when he's in the house, Jesus comes in. Look at verse 8. Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said to him, this day is salvation. Come to your house. <laughs> you too are a son of Abraham. I have come to seek and save the lost. Wow. Wow. Praise the Lord. Jesus didn't see Zacchaeus as a no good for nothing scoundrel. Jesus didn't see him as the scum of the earth. Jesus didn't see him as the bottom of the barrel. Jesus looked and saw his potential. This man has the heart of a giver. If he can just get over the spirit of rejection. He's been rejected so much. He doesn't know what love is. I'm going to love on him. Wow. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise. I'm going to tell him I want to come to his house. I want to be his friend. And the Bible says instantly Zacchaeus bursts forth with joy. Wow. What I'm kura bashike. Now God is re revealing something to me about the end time army. 
the, uh, that last generation that's going to bring forth the great harvest, the million uh, soul harvest, uh, uh, what they call the dread champions, uh, the Melchizedek priesthood, you know, that final group of uh, warriors that'll uh, uh, be as Moses, wow, as Elijah, because they were the Old Testament, they were the forerunners, and the glory of the latter house has to be greater than the former house. So the end time uh, servants gonna be as great and greater than the former servants. Wow! But this is the Lord, the Lord is revealing how they shall be. Jesus, wow, with just one word, he broke the spirit of rejection. He gave, he, he, those words so full of love and the spirit, and it went right into his heart and brought inner healing to Zacchaeus. Wow, he was rich, but he was hated. He had a lot of wounds inside. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? I got all this money. Nobody respects me. Nobody respects me at all. They don't give me a space. I got to climb up on a tree. You know, look at that rejection. But Jesus just, whew, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, I want to come to your house. <laughs> Shut up. Wow. And what I'm getting at is, you know, this uh, need of inner healing among the body of Christ. So many of us need inner healing and we see courses on inner healing and institutes for inner healing. And some of them, you got to go there several months and then, you know, people get inner healing and then maybe a year or two later, they got to come back. Then something else they need inner healing. But Jesus just instantly, one word, boom! And he brought inner, kushaka. He brought inner healing to Zacchaeus. Wonderful. Now I want to get at something else. God said this end time army is, their calling is to be ministers of inner healing and also carriers of love. Wow. And also they are to see the potential in the people and bring forth their God-given destiny. The God-given destiny that is in the people, like hidden as a seed in the people, the end time army is to bring it forth out of them. Wow, what a calling. Jesus saw Zacchaeus not as a thief, a scoundrel. Jesus saw him, this man is a giver. That's his potential. Wow. And he called it forth at, by love, with love. And he, here's the prosperity. Look at this. He, he ministers love to Zacchaeus. Ho! Oh, Zacchaeus gets inner healing. And the next thing, Zacchaeus, this filthy rich man, is like if he was the head of the IRS. <laughs> the head of the Federal Reserve System. Hallelujah. And he says, the half of my good. Goods, you know, his wealth back then probably equivalent to a hundred billion dollars. I give fifty billion dollars to the poor. Whoa, praise the Lord! That is instant wealth, instant prosperity. All the poor are gonna get tons of money. You know, we're look, looking at the politics. One politician says, "My promise uh, when I get elected president, I'll, I'll give a, a wage of one thousand dollar to every citizen." <laughs> well, Zacchaeus had a lot more to give than that. But what I'm getting at was, there was the wealth, and God spoke to me: love and prosperity go together. Wow, when you're really fully in Christ, as a minister of love, the, when you pour out that love, it will bring prosperity. Praise God. Love and prosperity go together. You know, when I was a, a kid, there was a song by um, Frank Sinatra. Love and marriage, love and marriage, go together like a horse and carriage. <laughs> <laughs> but this is God's song. Sing unto God a new song. Love and prosperity. <laughs> Go together like a horse and carriage. Praise God. But this is a revelation. 
When you get full of love and you're a carrier of love, it will bring forth prosperity. Praise God. You know, uh, inner prosperity, spiritual prosperity, soul prosperity. And when that happens, uh, then material prosperity will follow. Hallelujah. Prosperity, restoration. Anybody that I cheated, I'm not just going to pay him back. I'm going to pay him back four times over. Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But Jesus brought this forth. He saw that man up in the tree and he saw his potential and he called it forth by love. Wow. So this is the thing. Love the people. See their potential. Judge not by the appearance. Judge righteous judgment. Don't judge by sight. Judge by spirit. But if you're going to judge by spirit, you have to get in the spirit. Be full of the spirit. Praise God. So this is a wonderful thing. And we see here, you know, this Jesus is a, like the role model of the end time army. They're going to have the gifts of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit. Praise God. The fruit of the spirit, love. The gift of the spirit. They could see by discernment the potential in a person. They look deep inside. They see what that person's called to be. Praise God. Let's look at another uh, uh, episode with Jesus. Uh, John 4, uh, the woman at the well. He says, uh, you know, he uh, uh, asked for water. And then he says, if you knew who was speaking to you, you would have asked him of water. He would have given you living water. Hallelujah. So the woman says, well, give me this kind of water. <laughs> that I'll never thirst again for natural water. <laughs> what kind of water is this? Give it to me. And Jesus says to her, this is John 4, 16. John 4, 16, go call your husband and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, you have well said, you have well spoken, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. And the one you're now with is not your husband. You have spoken truly. And she said, oh my, you are a prophet. You are a prophet. You are a prophet. <laughs> and she says, hold on. <laughs> and she goes into town, not only tells the man she's shacking up with, she tells all the men in the, in the, the, the city, come see a man that told me everything I did. No, but she got it. And so when she comes back out and, you know, he, this man, he knows everything. He reads your, your, your inner self like the male, you know, <laughs> hallelujah. And so the people came. This is the Messiah. They believed him because of what she said. But then there was, you read the rest of John 4, there was many more who believed Jesus because when they heard him speaking directly, they didn't rely on the woman's testimony. They listened to Jesus and wow, the whole, it's like all the men in the town got converted. Wow. What I'm saying is Jesus, when he looked at the woman, he knew her life story. He didn't condemn her. Oh, you wicked woman. Divorce after divorce. You get a husband, you get a man, then you throw him out. You find someone else uh, uh, you're more interested in. <laughs> and and if, after you get bored with him, you throw him out. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, he didn't condemn her. He says, just call your husband. And she says, I don't have no husband. Oh, I know that, you know. <laughs> and so he did not condemn her. He spoke softly to her. She went to town. Jesus saw her potential. This is a woman who's not afraid to talk. This is a woman, she has the potential to be an evangelist. Praise God. Praise Amen. God. You, it's like Jesus knew if you just manifest to her something spiritual, something from the spiritual realm, some gift, or, you know, some word of knowledge, she's going to take it and run with it. And she's not afraid of talking to men. <laughs> she's going to tell all the men and they're going to get saved. Praise God. This is prosperity. All the men in the city get saved. It was now they join a church. 
the church would have prosperity. There'd be more tithes coming in, you know? <laughs> you listen to the news and they're saying, well, the, the recent poll, you know, compared to 50 years ago, now young people, more of the young people do not profess, profess Christianity. Christianity is on the downgrade, da downslope, you know? It's not like it was back in the 50s or 60s. Uh, people don't even go to church these days, many of them. And, you know, uh, even people teaching courses on evangelism, it used to be we could give them the four laws, you know, quote a scripture and, you know, peer, uh, bring conviction on the people. And you quote a scripture and the people knew what you're talking about because most people back in, you know, 50s or 60s or even 70s had church experience. But now uh, schools of evangelism, uh, that that's not going to work because many of the people, most of the young people haven't even had any church experience. So you can't quote a scripture to them. So now you've got to move by the gifts of the Spirit, <laughs> word of knowledge, you know? So this is the thing. Jesus manifested the word of knowledge. The one you're living with is not your husband. You've had five husbands. It's like, whoa, whoa, that was the word of knowledge. But it was also spoken with love. I don't condemn you. I don't condemn you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And she goes through these gentle words of Jesus. She goes and gets like the whole town, all the men that come, they all get saved. Praise God. Praise God. And so the Lord is saying, this end time army, this is how they're going to be. This is how I want them to be. They're filled with love and filled with the gifts of the Spirit. Filled with prophecy. Filled with the word of knowledge. Filled with wisdom but they're also filled with love. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And, and, and I'm telling you, this is what God has been, you know, this past several weeks as we enter into the new year, just pushing my spirit. You seek him as never before. Seek him as never before. Seek him as never before. Yeah, I I, I just want to give you another scripture. That's really another sermon, <laughs> but I can't hold it in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amos, it's Amos 5, 8. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It says, uh, seek him. Uh, who, and it mentions these uh, constellations. Uh, I don't study astrology much. Uh, seek him that maketh the seven. This is Amos 5 8. Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion. These are constellations, and you know, oh boy, here, here I don't study the stars. This one is uh, uh, Hercules, and this one is uh, the horse, and all that. Okay, seek him that maketh the seven stars in Orion, and turns the shadow of death into the morning, and makes the day dark with night, that calls for the waters of the sea, and pours them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. And so I love that scripture. I just love that. And it's like God just telling me, seek him who made the constellations and the galaxies. Wow. As galaxies, the, uh, light years, billions of light years away, God made them all. Seek him who calls the waters out of the sea and, and pours them out on the, uh, on the earth in terrifying tsunamis, you know. And what the Lord is saying, and really this is another sermon, seek the big God. Don't seek a small God. Seek the big God. He wants you to seek him for big things because he's a big God. And that's how he's glorified. <laughs> Praise God. Well, that's another sermon. But anyway, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow, this end time army. Lord, I want to be uh, a part of this end time army. Do you want to be part of this end time army? Shaka, just yeah. tell the Lord right now. Lord, I want to be the part of a part of this end time army that brings in the harvest, the billion soul harvest. Hallelujah. I want to be uh, the, the dread champions that's part of this end time revival. Lord, I want to be used in this way. I want to be like Jesus. Uh, yes, even as Moses and Elijah and even further because the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former house. Uh, I want to be filled with love. Ha. Words that I speak just boom. Boom. Just uh, shoot out 
shoot out love, bring inner healing just by words of love. I want to be filled with the gifts of the spirit, the word of knowledge, secrets of the heart be revealed to me by the spirit, the word of prophecy. Hallelujah. Miracle signs and wonders. Wow. Know by the spirit, uh, judge by the spirit, not by the sight. Hashakarabasaya. Operate in truth. Uh, see beneath the surface, uh, beneath the rough edges of the personalities of the people, even the sinful personalities. Go beneath that uh, to get to the root of their being, the reason for their being, the seed that's in them, the seed by the spirit, the potential that's in them. Some call the be evangelists, some call to be givers, hallelujah, shaka, but to see that, to see that, to see into the soul of the person as God has made that soul with its potential, God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh I want to be part of this, uh, otherwise, what's the purpose of living if I cannot give glory to God, shaka, hallelujah, I want to pray for the spirit of truth, uh, give me that desire discernment. Hallelujah. Give me that love. Spirit of truth. Spirit of truth. Spirit of truth. Abba Father. Abba Father. God is truth. The God of truth and without iniquity. Jesus. 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 You're the, the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Spirit. 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 Holy Spirit of God. You're the spirit of truth. Truth, truth, truth. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, download truth into my inner man. I can walk in truth, see in truth, see beneath the surface, see in the depths of God. As God sees, Hallelujah! So many times I've judged by appearance. Oh Lord, I want to get beyond that realm. I want to be used by you, used as Jesus, as Jesus walked the earth, seeing deep beneath the surface, seeing into the seed of the person, the seed that the Father God has put there, their potential. I want to call forth the destiny of people, even people lost in sin, but they will get saved when someone brings them a sign from God and speaks truth about their seed, their destiny. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you prayed over him? Or are you prayed about yourself? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, bless your people. Bless your people. I'm telling you, this is such an exciting time in God. This 2020, it's a new decade. God is pouring out as never before. Let's go for <laughs> go for the best. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless your people. Stir them up to go after God as never before, to seek him as never before, to put a desire in them. They want to be the dread champions, the end time army, the army that God uses for this billion soul harvest. Hallelujah. Yes. Stir them up to go after God until they come into this realm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Amen, amen, amen. Father, oh boy, thank you, Lord. The Lord is about to increase this year. Hallelujah. He wants to increase us, and he's given us instruction after, after instruction of how He, we can get into that place of increase in him. Amazing. Filled with love. Filled with love. Amen. He wants to fill us up with his love. Hallelujah. That we can be, we can go forth and give that love to others. Amen. Filled with fruit, the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Fruitful, fruitful, fruitful people. 
and the gifts just, of the Spirit. And the gifts of the Spirit. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting us know how we can live a life of increase this year. And I like what Pastor Lee said, the revelation that the Lord gave him about Zacchaeus and also the woman at the well. Uh, can you imagine if every every adulterous woman was called to be a, an evangelist, but wow. the devil had turned them around and to do such a thing, to 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 be to have such a lifestyle? Or Zacchaeus, a man who had a good heart, but the enemy used it yes. to put aside all wealth, and uh, and so we can look at people in a different way now, you know, with those stories and say, wow. Lord, help us to see people differently and call forth and give us uh, call forth their true destiny in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. But what I notice is that the, both of them had an encounter with Jesus. Amen. And we have to seek that encounter with Jesus because that encounter with Jesus will just birth that, that, the, the destiny of Amen. God in us. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and so let us seek that encounter with the Lord, a true encounter this year with the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that God will transform our lives, but through us transforms, transform many other lives as we're able to Amen. call forth the destiny of others too Amen. and see their lives transform and see them move into, uh, into goodness, Amen. you know, and, and, pros uh, and, and helping others to prosper and evangelizing the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless your, your word today. Thank you for your word. Hallelujah. Let your word bring forth its fruit in our life this year. This year, this year, this year. Great, great, great fruit, we pray in Jesus' mighty Amen. name. Love you all. Bye-bye. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> We're moving ahead in Jesus' name. Bye now. Have a blessed Sunday and a blessed week. Amen.